Come now, step off the land now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. On July 21st, 1969, those words were made famous by Neil Armstrong, the first person from Earth to step foot on the moon. The US and Soviets were in a battle of sorts to see who could get to the lunar surface first. The Soviets tried several times, but in the end, America was the victor. Between the years of 1969 to 1972, several trips to the moon had been taken, and a total of 12 people had walked on its surface. There are some who would disagree with that, however. There are some who believe that we were never on the moon's surface at all, that the whole thing was just made up, that the moon landing was make-believe. I love conspiracy theories, and this is a big one. Price-wise, the Apollo 11 mission cost $25.4 billion which today would be close to $150 billion. That's a lot of money. If it's real, that is. There is a lot of evidence that conspiracists believe proved that the whole thing was staged, and the reason why it could have been faked is quite simple. The US government was afraid to lose the space race to the Soviets, so they concocted this elaborate ruse to trick the world that Americans made it first to the moon. Now, it is pretty hard to think that all this was fake. I mean, the images and videos look so real. I mean, back then, how would they be able to do something like this? So what proof is there that would make any believer become a make-believer? Now, many have said that the photos of the moon landing seem altered, like they were Photoshop before Photoshop was even a thing. But if they were, it was done perfectly. Not sure how it could have been done with 1960s technology. I'll have to say there was some photos that did confuse me. This one right here, it's, it's just Neil Armstrong taking a picture of the lunar lander. But something seemed odd about it. Do you see it? No stars. Not a single one in the picture. And this one too. And this one. And this one. That didn't make sense to me, because you would think that the stars would be easy to spot in all that darkness. Now the theorists believe that NASA removed the stars on purpose so the astronomers wouldn't be able to map the constellations out to then prove the images were taken on Earth, not the Moon. The reason for the lack of stars is quite simple though. You don't see any stars during the day on Earth. If you live in a big city with bright lights all around you, you may notice that the stars at night are more difficult, if not impossible, to see as well. The sun's light would outshine the light of all the stars. The cameras were all set for daylight exposure and so would not pick up the stars. Other claims of photo manipulation can be found on this picture. It's of Buzz Aldrin on the ladder of the lunar lander. The issue is this little bright spot on the back of his right boot right there. It is believed that it's the light from a spotlight, like the ones you would use on a movie set. Yet again, the sun is responsible for this anomaly as well. It's just the same as light reflecting off of a street sign. Another issue people have with the photographs? The crosshairs. There are several images that seem to show the crosshairs either at a weird angle or bleeding through an object. The crosshairs are used by NASA to determine if there was any misalignment or distortion in the images after development. The weird angle one is really simple to explain and for most people quite obvious. The image was rotated slightly. NASA explains that was to make the horizon appear level. You can see it in this image here. As for the crosshairs looking like they were behind objects in the photos, that's something else. The reason for that happening is due to the sun. Again, I know, I know, it seems like a cop-out just to be constantly blaming the sun for these weird issues, but it does make sense. These crosshairs are very small. When a picture is taken and there happens to be a bright reflection from a light source, let's say the sun, well the bright light could easily wash out the crosshair. 
Another complaint that people had was due to the amount of radiation outside of the Earth's atmosphere. There was no way the astronauts could have survived the trip. It's called the Van Allen Radiation Belt, named after the one who discovered it, James Van Allen. Earth has two such belts, an inner and an outer belt. Thing is, the trajectory of the shuttle was set to bring the astronauts in as little contact with the belts as possible, and what radiation they were exposed to was blocked by the hull of the craft. Now this conspiracy theory is my personal favorite. The moon landings for Apollo 11 and 12 were done on a movie set, and Stanley Kubrick was the creator. Now he's famous for many films, but the one that captured the attention of NASA was 2001 A Space Odyssey. That film was released in 1968 and it's about humans flying to the moon. Supposedly, NASA wanted Kubrick to film the fake moon landing, just like his movie. The lander itself would really go to the moon, but they would use a duplicate lander on a movie set back on Earth, obviously, and film the astronauts as if they were actually walking on the moon. There are many issues with this claim, however. For starters, the only proof is this video, which is supposed to be an interview with Kubrick. That's right. That the moon landing was fake. The moon, land moon landings all were fake. <laughs> And I was the person who filmed it. You're serious, and okay. I'm serious, yeah. I'm dead serious. In this interview, he claims that he did indeed film the moon landing and that the conspiracy was true. Now here's the problem. This so-called interview was only allowed to be released 15 years after Kubrick's death. That's a bit weird and Stanley Kubrick looked nothing like that guy. Now this is Stanley Kubrick. It's an award speech he gave in 1998. He died a year later. They look like two different people. Another issue is the movement of the astronauts. In Kubrick's film, they walk around on the lunar surface as if there is normal gravity. But in the NASA footage, well, look for yourself. Then there's the lighting. Kubrick's film has the shadows of the astronauts showing as if the light source is right above them. See how short the shadows are? The NASA footage shows elongated shadows and it's a lot brighter because of the sun. Now sure, NASA could have coached Kubrick with all these science facts about space and that way he could have made it more realistic than his film, but I don't think so. With all the research I did, the videos, blogs, web pages I scoured through, I honestly believe that we were on the moon. And my reason why is quite simple. Do you have any idea of how many people were involved in the Apollo missions? Close to 400,000. That's right, nearly half a million people. If the moon landings were fake, do you honestly believe it would have stayed quiet? Do you not think that some solid evidence would have been found by now? This, coupled with everything else I researched, is why I believe. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button and then subscribe. Once again, my name is Rick, and if you can't make me believe, it's just make believe. Till next time.